Hi, welcome to Lisa Gollum Art, my second Tutorial Tuesday. Um, I just wanted to welcome you and say cheers. And we hope that you have fun. And today we are going to paint, wait for it, Summer Sunset. It's really pretty. And a lot of us can't get away much this summer because of COVID crap. The COVID crap, <laughs> we'll just call it CC from now on. The CC, getting us all down. So I just wanted to paint something beautiful and something fun with you that will pass the time for you a little bit and maybe you'll learn some new skills. While you're sipping a beverage, I'm using my really unique artisan wine glass. And I hope that uh, you have something even if it's coffee, because you know what, I'm also a coffee fanatic, but it's it's midnight, so I can't drink coffee at midnight quite, but <sighs> wine is good. Cheers. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I like red wine. But seriously though, sometimes when people are learning a new skill like painting, it's kind of nerve wracking. It's kind of like they're they're white knuckling their paintbrushes and they're they're all scared they're gonna make a mistake. You know what? It's okay if you make a mistake, it's all good. And sometimes a little bit of wine, a little bit of beer, or you know, hard liquor if you really want to do that. Those things it helps loosen you up a bit. There's actually studies that show that a glass or two of wine or whatever actually helps creativity. But the truth of the matter is, if you drink more than one or two, it's detrimental. So don't, I don't recommend that. But you know what? If it takes, if, if a glass of wine helps you let go of your agenda a little bit more and just relax into the process and have some fun, then that is great. If you want to meditate instead to get in that frame of mind of, you know, just creating and being all ethereal and and calm and peaceful. If you can get there with meditation, great. Kudos to you. I, I can't manage it. Uh, my meditating lasts like three seconds, like shiny, squirrel. <laughs> so, you know, um, I've taught meditation. It's kind of ironic as a therapist, I used to teach meditation and I still try to do it. But I'll tell you a little secret. I'm really not that good at it. <laughs> Plus I've had a glass of wine and then that helps a little bit. But anyway, we want you to just relax, have fun. So are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab Papa Bear a large one inch brush um, that's flat. And with Papa Bear, uh, we are first going to mix a sky blue. So I'm gonna take my palette, just like so, and I'm going to take Papa, and I'm gonna take a really big, huge blob of white and set it beside the blue. And then I'm gonna do that again. I have a fairly large canvas, so just keep in mind, if your canvas is smaller, you'll need less. Okay, so I just took on a little bit of blue to add to that. I'm gonna add a little more blue. So you can kind of custom make your colors. And you just, I, I try and tap my colors into my, into my palette, rather than make stir with big, huge motions, because it can really take over a palette. Of course, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because there's a ways around it. All right, so I've got Papa, and he's pretty loaded with paint. And I'm gonna start using horizontal motions at the top, just going side to side, starting at the very top, making sure the paint kind of gets in the grooves of the canvas. Sometimes you have to stroke it through a few times, like that. And you just, when it gets dry and doesn't cover, you just reload, put more paint on your brush. If it, if it's really dry and dragging on your canvas, you can always add a little more water to the paint. When I want to add water, I, I just um, stick the brush back in my, my cup of water 
which for me is an old cashew jar because <laughs> I like big cups for my water. But you can always stick him the brush in there and then back in the paint. Mix the water a bit into your pile of paint because you don't ever want your paint to drip. Okay, so now that I've got the first like quarter of the canvas down as far as you need to go with the blue, I'm just gonna bring a little more blue just in the sides. So kind of like you're creating like a little, little bit of an arc shape. And not like a square. You don't want to like make it square. You want to kind of randomly bring blue in from the side a little bit. Yeah, about to about halfway down your canvas, just for fun. All right, here's your blue. Now, if you know anything about sky and water, water is kind of like a mirror. So if since we kind of have water down here, if there's blue in the sky, there will be blue in the water. So it's like a mirror reflection. So if the mirror was here, this would reflect down here. So since I got lots of blue, I'm going to, with my brush, instead of like this way, I'm gonna turn it like sideways and just do this. But uh, yeah, I'm just working some blue in the bottom. So you don't have to go all the way to the sides because there's gonna be rocks. But you know, it's not like you can't. If you want to, go ahead. You can always paint black rocks over top of the blue. So there's there's no wrong way to do this. Just getting some blue in the water at the bottom. And of course, because you got blue here, you can put a little blue here as well. See, I said just go down a little ways and here I am going down further. There's a lot of blue in this painting, so you really can't go wrong. So there you go, blue, set down. Now, I don't know about you, but I have some blue left on my palette. So I am just going to take Papa. I washed, I, I kind of dabbed him off a bit in the bottom of my water cup, but he, he still has some blue on him. And through this blue, I'm gonna add a little bit of the magenta, like so. You're gonna end up with a bit of a mauve color. And a little bit more and it's up to you how drastic you want this with color mixing I, I usually just keep adding until I'm happy with what I see it's to me it's not an exact science it is maybe if you went to school to be an artist and you know and you're all that and you just kind of know what you're doing I like to eyeball things and you know just make it make sense to me so kind of a pinky mauve once you got some of that you're going to Put that on the bottom bit of your blue in the sky. Then you're gonna work your way down into the edges as well. And you can play with this, but it's really important if you're following along really fast, pause for a second, listen. It's really important to leave some white canvas for your yellows. And we can always add more purples back in. You can even put the tip of your brush just carefully in the magenta and put some magenta right on top of the blue because then it shows a little bit more than just doing the light purple on top of the blue. There. Just blending and remember from the last video, if you've watched it, the more you stroke, the more the colors blend. The less you stroke, the more you'll just see single brush strokes. So that's a good thing to know. All right. You'll notice I got the corners are still white. I'm doing that because I'm going to have rocks and things there. Now, the next step is the yellow. So I'm finding I don't have a lot of white in the center of my painting. And I kind of want a little more yellow than what the white is I have. But purple and yellow are actually complementary colors. And a little bit of tidbit information for you. Um, when you put two complementary colors on top of each other or mix them together, you get kind of a, they kind of cancel each other out. If I put yellow right on top of that purple, I mean, it might just look like storm clouds, but I don't feel, I'm not feeling storm cloudy tonight. I'm just not. It was raining all day today here. I'm filming this on a Saturday. Well, I guess it's technically Sunday now that it's midnight. I'm going to washing out. Papa there. 
and I'm dragging them on the side of my jar so that I don't get a lot of drippy water in them. All right, and then I'm going to get him kind of loaded with just pure white. So I got pure white on Papa. So I can take that pure white and, and it will cover. So I'm just going to see how I'm stroking, stroking, stroking side to side and just getting some nice covering some of those other colors. And you can do as much or as little as you want because it's just is going to create extra light in your painting. So it's all good and it can go over top of any color and it covers but doesn't kind of totally cover. So a lot of this, you'll, you'll notice with me, I kind of just play. Um, and every time I paint a same image, like the same painting, it will be different. Because I'm not really trying that hard to make it the same as the one I'm looking at. I mean, I could, wouldn't get it perfectly the same because I'm not a photocopier, but I would get it close and it would be okay. But I don't like that. I just want to, whatever mood I'm in, that's what's going to end up like. So, so now we got some extra white in this painting because I'm in the mood for white. I'm in the mood for white. Okay. So, there we have it. The sky and the water. Now all we have to do is add a little bit of yellow. So I'm not really overloading with yellow. Just kind of getting the top half inch or so of the brush not overladen, but with some yellow. Going to use the horizontal orientation this way again. And I am going to sort of decide now where my horizon is going to be. And you'd never want a horizon smack dab in the center of a canvas. You always want it either higher than the center or lower than the center. Today, I'm gonna make it lower. So I'm gonna make it about here. And you're like, oh, that yellow is so bright. Now I'm not going to cover all of the white with this yellow. I'm just going to cover a little bits of it. You can always add more later. And you'll notice I am going to go over where there's a bit of purple and then you're going to get a bit of gray. And I'm okay with a little bit of gray. Again, the more shades of a color, the more complex and more fun your painting looks. And that's awesome. One thing I don't want is for it to be on top of blue. Does blue and yellow make what? Green. I think most people remember that from grade school, learning that. Okay, now because I put yellow in the sky, I'm going to put yellow in the water. But I'm not going to put as much, and I'm still using a horizontal orientation. And I'm just putting the reflection of some yellow down into here. Okay, so, and just so you know, it's not over till it's over, and I know, I know that's profound. <laughs> that's a profound statement. So, just, but I just wanted you to think about that. Like, it's not over until it's over. So, with acrylics, you can layer, and you can paint as much or as little as you want. So, with this acrylic, I can, I can paint over this yellow if I decide there's too much later. Or if I want more, I can add more. It's all good. And I think I want more yellow in my sky, just because I can just a little bit. And I turned my brush this way because I just kind of want a bit of more of a wash of yellow. I can always add white on top of any color, anywhere, anytime. White is the painter's eraser. White is so opaque, or in other words, not transparent, that you can literally put it on top of everything but black maybe. And it, once it's dry. Okay, so once this paint was dry, if I painted white on it, it would cover it over and I could start over and paint something else I want. So it's like an eraser. Sometimes, sometimes you need two coats, depends a bit on the quality of the white paint, but, but that's kind of cool that you can do that. So I never worry too much, especially in the early stages of the painting, I don't worry about making mistakes because I can always have a do-over. Do-over! <laughs> it's all good. The next thing I'm gonna do I'm going to put the, just the tip of Papa Bear 
in magenta. Where are my horizons going to be? I'm just going to work in some of that magenta. Isn't that pretty? That's why I like, if you do this with red, it just wouldn't have the same effect. So I'm using the magenta really to define where my horizon is. Another little tidbit, the faster you paint a line, the straighter the line. It's fear that gets in the way. If you try and paint it like really slow, you'll go But if you just go fast, it's like, it's like I call it arm painting. So now I'm gonna just kind of work a little bit. Now you don't wanna cover everything that you've done so far and I'm using horizontal orientation, Papa Bear. And I'm just putting little accents of that pink in the water. Why did I start with the water and not the sky this time? I have no freaking clue. I have no freaking clue. I just did. Sorry, it's all good. I'm also finding it's a little bit pale and pastel-y, like Easter colors or something. I'm I'm not typically a big pastel kind of person in art or otherwise. I'm I'm kind of so I might I am going to add now some pure blue. And it's ultramarine blue, so it's a little bit of a purpley shade of blue. too when I put I put a little more blue here a little more blue here and maybe a little more blue at the very top right hand corner when I'm putting adding more and more colors to a sky or anything really I'm actually thinking a little bit about balance so if I just put a whole stripe of blue at the top and then two dashes one on each side in the same spot on the sides that would just that would look a little bit stilted in nature things tend to not be so uniform so when you paint, you have to resist the urge to make everything symmetrical um, and everything the same, because that's just actually not how nature is. That's a nice, some nice sunset colors. Only thing I'm going to do, and again, one of the hardest things about teaching is I can't see what you've got so far. I only can see what I've got so far. So you have to kind of just decide. You're gonna just sit back. It's always good to get about six feet away, actually, in your canvas or more, to kind of look and see, what do I need? And for me, I like it, and I think it's good. But I'm going to add a little more drastic yellow where I'm going to put the sun simply because I want the sun's going to be pure white. So I want the, the yellow behind to contrast. I don't want white behind the white sun. So I'm taking Mama Bear. Got her relatively saturated, not too saturated. I'm just going to right in the middle where the sun's going to go. I'm going to make that yellow a little more dramatic. Just at the horizon. You know. Now, because I made it drastic there, I'm going to do a little more yellowy right underneath that on the water. Remember how the reflection works? So, just a little bit more drastic or yellow in a couple places. I'm playing again, but I can't play as much when I'm trying to teach because I have to actually teach. Who knew? All right, I think I need another sip. Are you guys ready for another sip? I actually have paint on the top of this wine glass. I don't know how it got there. Okay, yum. Now we're going to use Mama Bear. So I'm washing the yellow out of Mama. And 
I'm going to dry her off a little bit on my towel. Your napkin, if that's what you're using. I'm going to take something that's going to be kind of scary for you, and I'm going to take some pure black. I know you're scared. It's okay. Don't be scared. So I'm going to use black and I'm going to start at the back and I'm going to form this rock. Then I'm going to form this rock, color that in, then I'm going to form a rock and then I'm going to form another rock and another rock. So as you can see, the way we're going to sh highlight the rocks, your viewer will see where the rocks are. And I'm also going to do a mountain-ish in the back and these, three, these rocks in the corner. That's my horizon right along here. So I'm going to start kind of above the horizon and I'm just going to rough that one in. If you anchor your pinky, it's always keeps, it's more like using a pencil. Like if I put my hand down, I can get, you can dab the paint off, but I can kind of anchor my pinky anywhere that's handy, that's not wet. Okay, and then I'm going to do another one. That rocks a little bit more of a cliff. I'm not painting them quite yet. I'm just going to show you to rough them in. And then I'm going to have one rock that kind of juts out a little bit of the water. I'm going to put the bottom of him to be kind of flatter. And he's going to be in front. Like so. And then, so I've got one rock, one rock, one rock, and then I'm going to put like a big rock that overlaps those guys. And that's the rock in front. And then you're going to have, when I do the bottom, I put the, pick up the canvas and put it on the lip of the easel because you need to be able to paint off the bottom. So my paint kind of stops there. So I'm going to put like a little rock here. So there's all my rocks on this side. So this is often difficult for people just to, to get the concept of this, these aren't just, this isn't just one rock, this is multiple rocks. It's, it looks very dramatic before you get the shading on it, for sure. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of a mountain back here, a little bit of an island, I should say, it's not much of a mountain. You can, if you want to, switch to baby bear. This is further away, so it requires a little more detail. I didn't use baby there for the big rocks because it would just take way too long. That kind of comes to a point where you can fill him and scuffle him in as well. If it mixes with paint behind and turns a little gray, that's perfectly fine. So much the better, actually. Okay, so. It's not over till it's over. I keep saying that. I used to always say it's not over the fat lady sings, but you know, I'm not a small woman. <laughs> so I, I got, I'm like, wait a minute. It sounds like I'm talking about myself and I have no plans to sing tonight. So <laughs> I don't say that anymore. Oops, I just did, didn't I? <laughs> you poor things. All right, so there we are so far. So I'm gonna next, do some highlights on the rocks. Well, they're still relatively wet and they're wet because I put quite a bit of texture. Like I put lots of paint. I wasn't skimping with that black paint. Thick, thick. I'm gonna take Mama Bear. I'm gonna grab some black and I'm gonna grab about the same amount of white. I'm gonna mix them together. And that's my first highlight color. Because remember I said, to make something look real and complex, you need three shades of the same color. So I'm going to do black, gray, and light gray to make the rocks look kind of more 3D. So there's my medium gray, but I'm going to add a little bit of blue to make it just match the sky a little better. So with that blue gray, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start at the back, work towards the front, the furthest rock away. I'm just going to, using a little bit of a side to side motion, on that top edge and maybe other edges, just put a little bit of that gray and kind of scuffle it in. We're doing a lot, I'm saying scuffling a lot tonight. And you can actually even rub with your finger the edges and it just creates really neat 
already done the first rock and the next one you can scuffle into that top and that's how you will define where one rock starts and the other one ends see isn't that brilliant so i always i like my finger for blending if you really don't want to use your finger you can take a clean dryer brush and sort of scuffle them together but i just find it's easier just to use my finger and you'll notice towards the bottom of the rock is mostly still black because I want the top of the next rock to kind of stand out. And so I want black next to that top of that rock. And you make some queer, weird little shapes with your gray so that there's different, different levels of shadow and light. These rocks are rough, so they reflect light and dark in different places. And that's all good. I kind of messed up my edge there. Pretty much I'm going to add a little bit more light gray at the top. There we go, scuffle it in a little bit. Not being very careful. Remember too that, that, that it'll dry a little bit darker than when you first put it on. Because acrylic always dries darker. I'm going on the lip of my, my easel again. Grabbing that top edge of this front rock. And sometimes because the black is wet, it mixes in with the black a little bit. And then you just add more on. It's all good. I don't worry about these things. So now we've got sky. We've got water. We've got rocks. The next thing I want to do is I want to show you. In the original, see how it's darker under here and darker underneath the one? These ones you don't see underneath. They don't reflect in the water because the, the sun's this back here, so the shadows will be coming towards you. So you won't see the shadows of these rocks, but you will this one if you did one in the middle, and you will see a shadow of that um, island in the back. So since you're going to see a shadow, you have to know how to paint a shadow. So I'm going to take Mama Bear and I'm going to wash her out, but I'm going to leave her pretty damp because I want to take some black from my palette, stick it somewhere else on my palette. This looks like it's still black, but it's really not black anymore because it's it's from me earlier today. It's kind of dry. But what, you want, what you're going for is, is paint that is like 50% water. But water will make it more transparent and we're going for transparent because you don't want the shadows to look as solid as the rock. You want them to look whimsical and subtle dancing across the water. These, these, these cute shadows. So you don't want them to boom, bam. See how much paint I've got in my hands? <laughs> Always get paint in my hands. Okay, so we're going to Remember how we water casts like sort of horizontal lines, in, like reflections, especially when it's calm, which this is. So you always want to, even when you're painting a shadow, you want to paint horizontal lines. And you want it to be roughly the shape of what's above, but it doesn't have to be precise. And you'll notice I'm going side to side, and I'm just working down to where the peak of that mountain will be. And because the sun's setting, the shadows can be really long. And under here and it's not over till it's over remember <laughs> so you can always um, lighten the shadow if it's too dark and sometimes that happens even with the best of us and for me these shadows go right all the way in so you won't see any light in the water that's under here One thing I also realize is that my, my water, for whatever reason, I don't know why, just kind of seems awfully light still. So I'm thinking I might get a bit a little more blue. Okay, All right, so we've got Mama Bear, and we're gonna mix a light gray this time, and again, adding a little blue to the mix. So that's like about a quarter the amount of black and a lot more white so i just a little bit of black i put it where i had the gray before because why not and stir it up and eyeball it 
And what I'm looking for is just kind of a nice dull gray. So with this lighter gray, you're basically going to do very similar to before, except a little less. So I'm just kind of more like dotting some of that lighter gray just on the edge. And then I'm going to buff it a little bit with my finger, which is a little harder when the paint's drier, but it looks good. And from you may remember, you're going to stand back from the painting. The sooner you rub, by the way, the easier it, it smooths it out because the paint dries like fairly quickly, you've probably noticed. And you can, like, this is kind of abstract right now that I'm doing, even though it's realism. Like, rocks are kind of like nature's abstract in a lot of ways, because they're just kind of like craggy and dippy and kind of crazy. So, you know, it's all good. I'm gonna put a little, little bit of highlights. The other thing you can do to mix, Stick my fingers in the water. Try not to let them be too drippy, just wet. And then you can like, as you can see, you can really move your paint around. So water, and as long as the paint's not really wet, will kind of reactivate. You also notice me doing this. If you want a speckled look, you can also use a sponge and you can get a bit of a speckled look. I really like to, wherever I want to differentiate between one rock and the rock behind it, that's where I really want that little pop of, of lighter rock color. Just, it kind of sets apart those rocks a little bit. And you can have a few that are really extreme if you want. paint was maybe a little dry. I put more water in it and we're all good to go. And I'm just doing, I'm using a really light touch. It's one thing that's hard for new artists to, to learn and that just comes with doing it a lot is, is how hard to push. Most of the, it depends on what you're doing, but most of the time you don't shove that brush in really. It's like a light little feathery touch. we are at the place of doing our sun. And I want to get the half sun on this Dixie cup. Now, I could use either side, but I think I'm gonna use the bigger side of the cup. You, you can eyeball it and decide depending on the size of your painting. So I'm just literally gonna paint the top half of this cup white. So I'm just gonna roll maybe there in some nice white. And I'm just going to mark the halfway point approximately first. I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm hoping well enough. So yeah, I just marked the halfway point. And then I'm going to put some white paint. Not, like not tons, just, just enough. You just need this to, as a guide. You're going to paint, you're going to still have to paint it in. But this will help you to like get it perfectly perfect semicircle to at least start with. All right, now don't worry if you get a little bit of it on the lake, it's okay. But I kind of come like the side and I eyeball and I can see where my paint starts on the cup. Should be good. Hold it there for a second, lift it off. And you got a little semicircle. Hopefully you can see that really nicely. So remember when you want detail closer to the metal of the brush and either put your pinky on the painting or your whole butt of your hand. And then I'm just going to first do the line at the bottom of the sun. There we go. And again, don't be like me. It doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> so with that nice pointy, not very loaded brush, I'm going to make some white 
fine lines underneath that sun. And this takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of a steady touch. And you're just going to do it where that round sun would reflect. So if you have a knife, if you have a knife from a dollar store or anywhere, any art supply store will have them, those plastic white ones, they're really cheap, uh, economical, I should say, and they work just fine. So you can use those. This is mine. This is my favorite palette knife. Now, the nice thing about a palette knife is it gives you really straight edge. It's almost just as straight like a ruler. So you can set your palette knife in the paint. So I'm gonna slice them through that pile of white there so that I have white just on the edge of the knife. So what you do is you're, you're holding it, you're holding it like, like you're gonna eat. Um, so you want the paint on the, the, the part of the knife that's away from you. So with this little white paint on the edge of your knife, you're just going to use that to create little white caps. Now you can get a few before you run out of paint and you just run it through that white again. And you can kind of set it down and then pull it down slightly or pull it up. Just don't pull very far down. It's like a really just a gentle so you get sound effects. But I love doing white caps with the knife because once you get used to it, it's just really beautiful what you can do. And really easy. Easy peasy. And again, not trying to make them too, too even. Sometimes when I have an island in the background and it's far away and I have the island and then the shadow, it just looks like a big dark blob. So sometimes when I'm using the knife with the white, or the white caps, I put a few white caps because you know what? There might be a few white caps at the base of that island. And I just kind of like to make it not quite all dark. Okay, so now we are not quite done. So that's the original. And um, so there's just a couple trees on each side. They go up further. You know, there's bigger rocks on the right. There's also taller trees. It's nice to have one side taller or bigger or heavier than the other. Again, it's to avoid the symmetry because symmetry looks unnatural when you're painting things that are natural. So if you, do, you two went out to a uh, lake and took a picture and there was trees, they wouldn't all be exactly the same height. They would vary. So we're going to take baby bear and we're going to be very, very, very brave <laughs> with baby. And we're going to put baby in pure black, depending on your paint, especially now that it's been sitting for a while. it's usually good to stir in a bit of water. And that just means putting my paintbrush in the water and stirring it in until I see kind of a nice consistency that's kind of buttery. Okay, I'm spinning my brush out of that black so I have a nice point on my black brush. I put my hand close to the metal and I'm gonna decide on this side, I'm gonna go, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna start on the left and work to the right. Um, so that I don't put my hand, so I can put the butt of my hand on my canvas without worrying about getting it on wet paint. Although the white is a little bit wet, so just so you know, avoid the white if you can. <laughs> All right, so on, on the original, this the tree on the far left comes up a little bit above the island. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to literally just grease that brush on the canvas. Now, I have to reload my brush already because you want lots of paint because you don't want to have to keep going back and forth to get the line to, to go. And this, in the original, is really close to the edge. I'm watching that white, my pinky there. And it's fairly narrow. Now, now if, you're, if your trunk is a little thicker, that's okay. Now, 
you can decide with the trees on the bottom whether they go maybe tuck behind the one rock or come all the way to the bottom. It's up to you. I think in this side I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Yep, reload again. All right, and then on this side, I don't want the, uh, the second tree to be as tall. So I'm just going to make a little guy and I'm going to make him kind of wonky. He's going to lean out a little bit. I'm always very careful when I first set him down. And then I made him. So my first two trunks, they're pretty small. They're kind of like spindly trees because they grew out of the rocks, right? Trees growing in no soil whatsoever can't be too robust. step requires a little visual. So first I'm going to show you the original and I want you to notice something. To make it look kind of evergreeny, um, you know how Christmas tree is kind of this triangle. So you're dotting but you're creating the umbrella sort of shape or you can be a little more drastic triangle if you like that and they can hang more. But what you don't want is to be all of them the exact same. So that's the ticket. That's the, the hint is to not um, let it go too predictable and to make them go down, not up. Sometimes people in my classes and restaurants, they would have the top of the tree, but instead of the needles kind of cascading, they had them going up this way and it's like, like this. And I'm like, um, on the trees I know, usually branches don't grow this way on an evergreen. I mean, they do on a normal tree, so they were probably confused. Or they were drinking too much. I don't know which. <laughs> but like, for this purpose, baby bear and kind of an arc slash triangle evergreen, like Christmas trees type trajectory. Good work for the day. So you're going to put um, a little bit of water again in that black paint. A, because it's been sitting a while, and B, because you, you, I don't mind you having a little transparency at this point for these, so they look more wispy as opposed to solid. So I, I probably put four or five brush folds of water in this. I'm going to roll my paintbrush and I'm going to roll my paintbrush on the towel or paper towel in your case probably as well. That's because this is a little bit more of a dry brush technique. So the drier the brush gets, the more wispy the um, needles will be. Watch, I will show you. All right. So again, starting on the left, working that direction. I'm gonna start at the top and do a couple taps like a woodpecker, tap, 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 in that lovely woodpecker. And then I'm gonna come down. You notice how wispy they get? And then you reload for the next one. Roll on your paper towel. You can start relatively close or you can go down a little more. It's up to you. And we're doing these in black because they're kind of silhouetted. I know that normally an evergreen is green. But to mix all those colors and do all that would make it a little more difficult and we wanted it. This painting already has a lot of steps. I didn't want to complicate it any more than I already needed to.
So we got our beautiful sunset. And as I'm looking at this, I might add a little more white for me, for the sky. Just getting some white on the tip of mama. And I'm just going to kind of put it wherever the heck I want. And again, I'm using kind of side to side strokes and just kind of whitening up and lightening up a little few pieces of the sky. I'm just going to take a wet brush and I'm going to go through what I just did with the white and the water will kind of spread it and blend it and sort of make it go nice. I just have to be pretty careful I don't hit that tree. <laughs> that would be it. So it just kind of blends the white a little bit more. Now you know how to paint paint on it whatsoever. At the very end of our painting expeditions, we always have to take baby bear, pick one of the colors that we used in the painting, and put our initials or sign your name or however you want to do it in the bottom corner of your painting. My little LG sig signature right in the bottom corner. Just like so. There we have it. Summer sunset. Thanks for joining me. Feel free to connect with me in the comments or check out my social media sites below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, show those like and subscribe buttons some love. See you next Tuesday.